This week, I've started on the journey of trying to make the game actually look good. For the past few years, it's basically just been programmer art, and finally, I snapped. Also, it was just the most requested topic from last week. And finally, it was time to walk into the crusty world of writing custom compositor shaders. Hooray! And I'd just like to say, all of this is a work in progress, and I'm experimenting more than anything, so don't freak out. This is a game about exploration and discovery in a high fantasy world, you discover things, kill monsters, collect items, level up, gradually progress and discover things in the world, and you go on a journey. And that's what we all want in life. This week we're going to test vertex animation for the trees, edge detection algorithms to make things actually stand out, and also fog, along with all these other cursed things. Check this out. That's kind of cute. I mean, that shouldn't look like that at all. One of the big problems I had was that my shader system just wasn't flexible enough. This is what a lot of the shaders that did the voxel unpacking looked like. So this all happened on the vertex shader. So the way this used to work was that I'd just write a magic number into each of the vertex definitions. And then based on that, I would know what I actually need to do. So what I've updated it to do instead now is that in the shader preprocessor, I now use these things, which are essentially equivalent to macros. So you can see things like property packed voxels, property voxel terrain take away four, that sort of thing. Uh, and then you get a different shader generated. So all of this if statementology that happened in the previous one now no longer has to happen at all. As I was going to start ramping things up, like I just couldn't keep doing these inline if statements. It just wasn't going to work. There we go. That's a little bit better. Yeah, no, stuff like that. It just doesn't look right at all. <laughs> Perfect, ship it. I'm animating the tree trunk at the same rate. If I just pack some extra flags into the voxel definitions, but then I'd have to be able to tell the voxel generator which one's not to write. And I could just say, anything of a brown color, don't animate. We somewhere in the color palette there. And the question is, what index is that at? What index is uh, 663300 in this list. 149. Right. So basically, what I'm saying is don't animate the tree trunk. Ah! Okay, so it's either 191 or 137. God damn it, ChatGPT. Okay, nice. That does look better. So I think one of the problems I've introduced with my new collision system is that like the enemies attack themselves as well. So, like, look, the goblin starts hitting the player. He's also doing damage to himself. You know, no one tells you how hard it is to make a game, even a simple one like this. Like, everyone looks at it and it's like, oh, it's all square, what's up with that? Hey, look at this, my HLMS change managed to break the build. But this is also good because this is exactly what I want automated testing to do. Why don't we do something cute and test it in Linux? Because I can't really check OpenGL on uh, Mac. So I probably just forgot to do this. And it's good to see that this uh, testing plane isn't like on the floor anymore. Like, see, I wouldn't have found that unless I had automated cloud builds, or I would have found it, but I would have found it later on. And then I would have had to spend ages figuring out which commit broke it. This is why you gotta write automated tests, guys. Always remember. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it looks like I got everything working except for the thing that I actually wanted to get working. Because I set those ones to animate. Animation on the trees. This is good. Uh, okay. That didn't work. Oh, I know why it is. It's because it's not 191. 191 is green, isn't it? Oh. Okay, so these trees animate. And... These trees animate! Yay! Are you seeing this? What's going on in the water? Oh, this is concerning. I don't like that. It must be the shadow. Right, the apple tree as well. Oh, it's such a helpful friend. I love you very much. Four and 184. You doing it? Oh, it's not doing the wiggle dance. Uh, right, why didn't this work? Ah! Oh, am I just to conclude it's not actually 74? 75. Oh, that's so disappointing. Yeah, you got it. You got it wrong, mate. Oh, don't give me the blushy smiley face. Bloody hell. So you recognise now that you're a rock. <laughs> it's 184. It's simply not. So I'm gonna have to add all this f***ing shit up by hand now. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's quite a subtle effect. Like, it's one of these little details that when you zoom in, you can see it, so. And uh, really, that's kind of what you want to go for. So I thought I would try and see if I could add some fog to the game. It seems like Ogre actually already has an implementation of fog. So it looks like I can change some values to it. I, I wonder if it's based on anything. Okay, that looks a bit more like it. 
Well, that's good. So let's implement that in the game and see what happens. This is really all I wanted to see by the end of today. It's just something on the screen. Check this out. Wow, fantastic. This is what I expect from every single video game I play from now on. Okay, so I set the fog to be really high and also I think it's trying to do like, you know, cool sunset vibe uh, when really that's not what I want. There we go. See, that's actual fog. The problem is that this is for realistic games, right? This fog is actually intended to, to kind of be photorealistically correct. And this is a stylized, <laughs> a stylized game where I can't really do that sort of thing. And I just don't have that much control. Like there's just not that much flexibility. Like if I go into my inventory, you can see the players still got some fog over them. If I was to collect some stuff, you can see there's fog over the stuff that, that animates the collection. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to try and write my own fog implementation. We're going back to basics with shaders. So I've rendered the entire scene to another texture, so it looks identical. So now I can do things like this. So if I multiply it by a value and start it up again, then I will get my horrific red scene. Um, but what I really want to do is be able to get hold of the depth texture. <gasps> Woo! That actually looks correct. Sort of. Nice. One of the main things I wanted to experiment with this week was a line drawing shader. My plan was to use a depth texture to determine where there was a sudden drop in the distance between pixels and then actually draw a line there. <gasps> ah! It's actual edge detection. That's incredible. Hmm. There we go. There we go, that's what I wanted. Interesting. The way it kind of pops in and out is a little bit annoying. Especially the trees, like they stand out a lot more now that they've got that on. Uh, okay, so this is what it looks like on OpenGL on Linux. Um, <laughs> it doesn't work, which leads me to believe I've got the wrong texture going in. Yay, nice, nice, nice. And actually, it wasn't a problem with the shader then. The shader was bang on. In fact, yeah, the shader was 100% correct. The problem was totally in the material definition. That's wild. That's not at all where I thought it was going to be. Um, now obviously as this is lower resolution, the outlines are going to be thicker, so I'm going to have to have a think about that. This is another failed attempt at getting fog to work. This one's weird. I'm guessing I'm just applying the wrong matrices by the wrong other matrices. I'm basing this whole thing on this um, Thin Matrix tutorial from like 10 years ago. That should give you the value I would have thought. Oh god, my mind's totally going. <laughs> I've been at this for ages. Ooh! Oh, okay. I just multiplied my matrices in the wrong order. Okay, that looks like proper fog now. Like the problem is that, okay, so say the game runs like this, you can't see what's off in the distance, so it doesn't really work. Because I, I really do want you to be able to zoom out and see everything. No, that's good. It's good. I just need to sort this line drawing algorithm out. So that's it for this week. Next week is going to be the same, it's just going to be more compositor effects and more polish until I basically can't look at it any longer. And also thanks for the response to the audience participation request last week. Um, the videos are doing slightly better at the moment, so I think maybe the algorithm did actually pick up on the fact that people are leaving comments. So leave a comment down below. And speaking of weird graphical programming things that most people don't have to deal with because they don't write their own engine, how about you watch this video where I talk about adding Vulkan support to the game?